welcome back to learn economy in this video also we are going to cover uh, theory of unlimited supply and demand uh, the one which is given by uh, arthur lewis so as you all know uh, if you remember uh, in the, in our previous video also we have discussed the same topic only but in this video we will be uh, moving a bit more uh, with respect to this theory uh, uh, so uh so before starting this video i would like to uh, remind you one more thing i i have seen that a lot uh, there have been many of my viewers my, many of my viewers are actually non subscribers to my channel uh, so these people uh, just view my view my videos and just go away that's it um, so i have a request to all my non subscriber viewers uh, please uh, do subscribe to my channel Uh, so that will definitely act as an encouragement for me uh, to give you more detailed explanation with my new upcoming videos which discuss uh, a lot more in with respect to the arena of economic theories so with that let's uh, start today's video unlimited supply of labor of arthur lewis so uh, as we have already seen uh, in the lewis theory of economic development there have been there are two different sectors uh, which are identified by lewis there is a subsistence sector and a capital sector and the cap, uh, subsistence sector uh, he identified uh, it to be agriculture sector or some sector uh, that use labor as a sole the, the labor is the main um, factor uh, for production whereas in the capital sector or uh, the manufacturing sector uh, it uses um, capital as a main uh, as a main factor of production so uh, this is a basic difference between the two uh, sectors of uh, two sectors identified by lewis and uh, another difference is that uh, uh, as against the capitalist sector in the uh, assumption sector what we could see is that Uh, the subsistence sector doesn't use uh, reproducible capital. At the same time, uh, reproducible capital is made use of by the capitalist sector. And uh, and also another difference is that compared to the wages paid in the subsistence sector, what we could see is that if you compare the wage rate between the capital sector, the one paid in the capital sector and one paid in the subsistence sector, you could see that the in the subsistence sector only subsistence wages. Paid, whereas in the case of capital sector, uh, wage something above the subsistence wage is paid. So uh, people always prefer uh, capital sector. Uh, but let's see what the theory is going to explain. Uh, now, as a result, also we could see that the marginal productivity of labor uh, is zero in the case of subsistence sector. This is so so because there are surplus labor in the subsistence sector because uh, as we have already seen in our previous videos uh, uh, sorry in the previous video we could see that in the subsistence sector there is some kind of discard unemployment present if, if even if you remove some laborers from the subsistence sector that won't affect the total output of the subsistence sector so as a result there is still some discard unemployment in the subsistence sector so uh, and as a result uh, we could see that the marginal productivity of labor is zero in the subsistence sector whereas on the other hand we could see that the marginal productivity of labor is positive in the case of capital sector so these are the basic difference between the subsistence sector and capital sector so this we could conclude that there are less similarities between the, these two sectors especially in the developing economy and uh, if and this uh, difference will get widened if the development is loop sided or there is uh, very much high inequality in the economy so uh, actually we have covered all these things uh, the uh, uh, the uh, divergence between the subsistence sector and uh, and the capital sector in one of our videos which, which discuss about the dualistic character of the economy uh, actually the dualistic theory is very much important to understand especially in the context of a Uh, developing economy so if you haven't watched those videos please go and watch those videos i have uh, in detail discussed uh, all the three dualistic theories uh, financial dualism uh, social dualism technological dualism etc in in uh, in the already uploaded video so if you haven't watched those videos please go and watch that those videos that would be very much informative to you if you have 
not got any idea about dualistic character of undeveloped economy. So with that, let's come back to uh, Lewis' theory of unlimited supply of labor. Uh, so under uh, the above circumstances which we have explained, the main problem is actually to provide the gainful employment to unlimited supply of labor. On the one hand, we have capital sector. On, on the other hand, we have substance sector. And in the substance sector, we have lot and lot of lot uh, of laborers working in the substance sector, and the marginal productivity is uh, of the labor in the substance sector is zero. So, how can we deal with this problem? And uh, answer is given by Lewis with in this way, and uh, he says that. Uh, uh, if in order to get rid of this problem, we have to. What we have to do is that we have to focus uh, uh, on the development of the economy by giving importance to substance sector. But substance sector has to be expanded. But at the same time, we have to uh, give importance to capital sector as well. So, in order to provide employment to the unlimited supply of labor, uh, what he has suggested is that either we have to go for um, uh, creating new and new industries. With respect to the development of capital sector, new and new industries can be uh, established. Or what we can do is that we have we can expand existing industries. And uh, so, uh, in the, whether we uh, whether we go for new industries or whether we expand existing industries, uh, so we have to take a caution that this expansion would not limit the current wage rate by drawing up the labor from the substance sector or the substance wage. So this is what uh, he has specified, and um, uh, here uh, it implies the mobilization of labor from substance sector where the marginal productivity of labor is very low or uh, zero to the capital sector where the wages are high and the marginal productivity of labor is high. Lewis says that the capital sector actually needs skilled laborers. That is it because they have to deal with the emissions, equipments. And all the factory level production and all. So as a result, what we want in the capital sector, in order to make capital sector expand, or in order to develop the capital sector, what we need in the capital sector is that skilled workers. So we don't need any unskilled workers here if we wish for expansion of the capital sector. So what is the way out? We know that there are plenty of laborers existing in the uh, agriculture sector. And we can draw some laborers on the agriculture sector, but how can we make sure that these people are skilled? So, in order to in order to improve their skill, what we could do is that we can give them training. So he says that uh, as a result, uh, this skilled laborer, whether we have we are getting a skilled laborer or not, this is a my this is not identified by Lewis as a my very major uh, major problem or bottleneck in the economy because we could uh, facilitate training programs so as to make this labor skilled so that is uh, the main solution that Lewis has offered so let's understand what is capital surplus uh, so we know that um, uh, as we have already said there are two sectors one capitalist, one substance, and in the substance sector, there exist plenty of laborers. And uh, and whether it is capital sector or substance sector, the main objective of the uh, objective of the entrepreneur uh, would be to maximize profit. And if you take into consideration the capitalist uh, capitalist sector, here uh, here also as we have seen uh, the entrepreneur's main aim is to maximize his profit. So the capital surplus is actually the difference between the marginal productivity of labor and the capital wage. That is how much additional level of production is made to the uh, capitalist industry by an extra labor, and what is the extra wage that is paid to the labor. So this is the, uh, the so this is the capital surplus, the difference between the marginal productivity of labor. And the uh, different and the wage rate paid to that wage paid to that labor. This is the capital surplus. Okay. Now, uh, the capital sector, uh, as we have already said, uh, would draw labor from the substance sector, and and because uh, uh, there are two points to be noted here. One, we have plenty of laborers working in the agriculture sector or substance sector. Secondly, 
we have higher wage rate offered by the um, capital sector compared to the wage rate of offered in the subsistence sector so attracted by this higher wage rate people from working in the subsistence sector will go to the capitalist sector so uh, and these people will start working in the capitalist sector and the contribution to the output uh, is also higher despite the higher wages uh, in the capital sector and uh, in this way surplus would be generated in the capital sector again i would like to remind you that uh, capital surplus is nothing but the difference between the marginal productivity of labor and the capital wage paid to the labor now uh, this surplus is identified by lewis as the capital surplus and capital surplus is what what would uh, capital capital uh, capitalist do with this capital surplus he actually reinvest the surplus so as to go for the next round of production and the capital surplus the surplus is thus reinvested in the capitalist asset by the entrepreneurs this would definitely lead to capital formation in the economy and the economy would de develop as a result of this capital surplus this would create new jobs for the unemployed laborers withdrawn from the subsistence sector as a result we, we can uh, we can take more laborers from the agriculture sector or subsistence sector and give them em employment opportunities in the uh, capital sector okay now uh, the supply of labor here is supposed to be perfectly elastic at the capitalist wage rate and thus the laborers continue to be available at the exist existing capital wage rate uh, and this kind of uh, uh, cap generation of capital surplus and reinvestment of the same to expand uh, and uh, 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 capital formation and development of the economy all these things would act in a circular fashion Uh, this would be uh, acting in a circular process. So as a result, surplus generation, increased investment, increased demand for labor, etc., will definitely lead to uh, uh, some kind of uh, some kind of uh, process that will help that will give the economy a helping hand to make the economy come out of the state of underdeveloped. So in short, we could see that uh, the process of economic development continues till the capital labor ratio rises. and the supply of labor becomes inelastic and surplus labor disappears so uh, this capitalist formation depends upon the capital surplus this is the main idea or the crux of the theory of arthur lewis uh, and limited supply of labor so we we'll understand uh, in this diagrammatic presentation how this surplus capital surplus is generated and how it is reinvested and how this would lead to economic expansion and help the economy come out of the problem of underdeveloped okay so in the initial level what we have uh, on the x axis we have ox 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 is the labor uh, quantity of labor is measured on the x axis uh, ox uh, now uh, oy or the y axis look at the marginal productivity this is marginal productivity is taken into consideration in or wages is taken into consideration in the y axis now uh, initially ox is a wage Uh, oh, oil is a wage that is paid in the agriculture sector, and this is known as the substance wage paid in the substance sector. Now, O W uh, is the wage rate paid in the capital sector. Okay. Now, uh, here horizontal supply curve. So, is the W W. This is unlimited supply curve, unlimited supply of labor curve. This is W W, and um, uh, so. If you start at O E one, O E one, what happens is that O E one not O E not or O E dash. What happens is that, and um, here at O E dash, here we could see is that M P is A dash T one. M P is O E dash here M P. The marginal productivity is that A dash B one here, uh, and uh, the total output output is that O A B dash E one. Here wage paid is that O W P dash E dash, and uh, and uh, here the surplus output is that W A dash P dash. Okay, this is surplus output which is reinvest invested so as to make next level of production. As a result, M P uh, marginal productivity it shifts to A to D two. This is what uh, this this is the shift uh, A to D two. And um, it would need to happen at this level also. There is some kind of surplus generation, reinvestment, 
and next level of production and further this will be shift to a2 a3 b3 and so on this will act as a process and as a circular in a circular fashion this will go on and will lead to uh, and uh, will lead to what is known as uh, uh, lessening of underdeveloping in the e underdeveloped economy so uh, how far this process can go this is a question that is worth to be answered here uh, and it will say that uh, this process would continue so long so long as one particular phenomena happens what is that particular phenomena so this you know this process will continue till the entire surplus is absorbed once the entire surplus labor is absorbed from the agriculture sector this process would stop because we are we are not able to in this uh, at, the, at that particular situation no more labor is available at surplus labor in the agriculture sector so that uh, there won't be any possibility to withdraw labor from the agriculture sector so at this point this process will stop this is what is told by so uh, after uh, what we could uh, understand in this particular theory is that uh, louis actually you know, he has uh, given some uh, some explanation regarding technical progress and he says that the technical progress can be recognized as capital saving device and labor saving device whether we consider it as a capital saving device or we consider it as a labor saving device in both the ways uh, technical progress tends to enhance profit capital or capital surplus in the economy and as a result there would be employment generation in the capital surplus capitalist sector so with that we end this video uh, i would like to thank you for watching this particular video and also uh, i would like to remind all my non subscriber viewers please like share and subscribe to this channel for more videos with that i end thank you